so we've got this. I don't have, let me tick off what we've got. One of the problems I have is describing what I do. We've done the clock and the automaton. I also always worry that people don't understand what I'm saying. Dancing data we've done. The data we've I've always liked art. I've always liked photography. I've done a fair bit of um, stop motion animation. So I'm, I'm always happy to try using that as a way of describing what I do. I'm interested in the way we get sick and recover from infections, the whole cycle. We've been doing experiments where we look at mice that are infected over time and we look at them deeply, so we're monitoring many different parts of their physiology at once. If we're measuring, say, nine things and each of them changes one after the other over time, you end up making, at best, a complicated graph and it's something that's hard to describe. So what I've tried doing is making a, a, a data sculpture. So this is a, uh, a bracelet that uh, follows, I think, seven dimensions at once and you start here and read it as time goes along this way and you can see that one um, symptom after another comes up and then resolves and they all happen at different times. Uh, another way of showing that is to plot it sort of flat as spirals. So these are the same data but you can see here we're looking at it as hills and valleys. I find it useful always to look for correlations that might be unexpected in your data or patterns that you you wouldn't recognize when you look at it in a in a regular way. One thing we've noticed in our data that we hadn't noticed until I started doing this is that there's a wave that moves through the data. And what happens first is this little guy comes up here. This is interleukin-12. It's the first thing to turn on in the infection. Um, probably you'd show up at the doctor's office when you're here in the middle of the infection with these symptoms. And then at the very end, the last thing to happen is that these gamma delta T cells come up at the end and uh, that's uh, the infection's over after that. And um, like I said, when you look at it, you can't help but see that there's a wave that moves through the, through the data. So by making these machines, it showed me there was something I could measure that I hadn't been measuring. I like the way they, they look as well. Part of the beauty of these things could come from some beautiful math underlying the biology. I don't think of our data sets as big data anymore because we can, we can simplify them and say, look, really what's going on is you're, you're tracing a circle. That's not a big idea. That's something we can boil down the data to. It's hard to understand many things at one time. And what we often tend to do, I think, is, is flatten it out so that you can look at the whole picture. And um, I think when we do that, we lose some information. So I, I think that these sculptures help, help show that better. I'll still have to figure out how to publish these things. You know, when you end up publishing it, there's a flat picture in the journal. So um, we have to get around that problem.